Baptist. I want you to note on your bulletin, uh, there's an attached tab. I'm asking you to fill out that tab and uh, the information there, your name, address, and those things. I want you to hold on to it. And at the conclusion of the service, I want you to come by out front. Rhonda and myself will be out front. And you can bring that slip to one of us. We have a gift that we want to give you. And just, I want to have the opportunity to speak to you and uh, just uh, welcome you to Calvary and let you know how glad we were that you were here. So fill out the tab, hold on to it, bring it to us after the service uh, to receive a gift uh, from us. And uh, so uh, take care of that. But good to see all of you here this morning. We're glad that you chose to come to Calvary to worship our Lord and Savior. And you already heard about the, the children's Christmas program tonight. Also the fellowship following that tonight. We just encourage you to be here and uh, to be a part of this evening service. That all begins at 6 o'clock. Also, don't forget about the postcards out uh, this way through Double Doors. Uh, you may have post uh, Christmas cards out there that folks have given you. The post office is there, and uh, you can do that. Also, this is another way that we raise money for Live Moon. If you put Christmas cards in the post office, uh, then there is a box for you to leave money uh, in that you would have used for postage or any amount that you would like to place there. It goes uh, to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. So you can do that, and you may want to go buy. You may have Christmas cards out there, so go buy and pick up your Christmas cards. Also, we had 266 uh, in Sunday school this morning. Just a reminder to you that there is a place for you in Sunday school, and we want to encourage you to come, study God's Word, discuss God's Word, fellowship with other believers uh, during Sunday school. I also want to call your attention to an insert, and that is the night to shine uh, insert that is in your bulletin. Now, this is uh, done by the Tim Tebow Foundation. It is a special prom night uh, for those with special needs. And we're actually having one here in Wayne County this year. It's going to be over at uh, Coastal Pines. Uh, the date is on there, which is February the 8th. And we have been asked to participate. And we are going to help with the parking and when, they, uh, when those uh, guests arrive. So we need 25 to 30 folks or so to commit to this. You'll notice on this, the reason I wanted you to have a look at this insert you need to go online. There's an online place that you go to and uh, sign up that you would be a volunteer at this. And also, uh, there are a couple of days of training, and that is on there. This is mandatory training uh, that uh, has to be done for this. So uh, please take the time to do that and just uh, uh, be a part of this special night. It's February day, but uh, all of this has to take place to train and sign up. And all of that needs to take place now. I would also ask the church family to remember in the counts uh, this morning and her family due to the death of her brother. Uh, his funeral is tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock at Liberty Church. So uh, just remember Miss Edna in prayer. And remember all the other announcements. It's good to see you here at Calvary. Would you stand again at this time? Uh, this is an opportunity for you to move around, greet any guests you may see. Welcome one another to the church.
God, we truly thank you for the greatest gift of all. Your son, Jesus Christ, who came and died on the cross. We can have an eternal life and plan of salvation. Father, this morning, we pray especially for the person in this service that doesn't know you as our Savior. We are speaking of your word. Brother Van brings a message that their hearts will be touched and they will come to know you as their Savior. Father, we should pray for all the activities you want in this church. There's many. We pray for the program and the children. all the other activities that are going on. Father, we just want to lift up our people on the prayer list. There's many names on there. We ask that you just be with them in different situations in each one. Let's pray that you just touch them in a special way. Father, it's this time of year, we want to remember our troops, men and women, military, and also our missionaries. A lot of them are separated from their families and all their families during this time of the year. But you just be with them, give them special blessings, and live that peace and calm. Come this time to serve us to give back a portion of what you blessed us to do in this race. You take it and use it to the Lord and give it to the name of the Lord. Amen. Jesus is the only name we're 
how great you are, how wonderful you are, dear Father. And Lord, we are amazed by your love. We are amazed by your wisdom. We are amazed by your grace. We're just amazed that you love us and that you save us from our sins, dear Father. And Lord, we pray for folks that may be present today who have never experienced the forgiveness of sin, never trusted Christ to save them. And Lord, may today be a day of salvation for them, dear Father. May it be a day that you speak to your children that we are renewed in our commitment to you, dear Heavenly Father. But, oh God, we pray for you to move in a, in a powerful and mighty way in the service this day, dear Father, drawing people to yourself. And I pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Well, last week we looked at the Father in the Christmas story. Today we're going to look at the mother in the Christmas story. So the mother in the Christmas story. When you think about the mother in the Christmas story, in some circles, Mary is really given too much power and recognition in uh, the sense that she is presented as having been born sinless. She's looked to as being one that, through which we can go and, and intercede to her and uh, receive answers to prayer. So in, in that sense, we, uh, we see that more is uh, given to her, more power and recognition uh, than really what she is because she was just a normal young lady who was chosen by God to be the mother of our Lord. But yet in other circles, uh, Mary is more or less an afterthought. That's all that she is. She was just the way for a baby to be born, and, and not much more is given uh, to her. But I believe that Mary, in the story of Christmas, is one of the pivotal characters, a very important character as we uh, consider her role uh, of, in the Christmas story. You find the uh, story of the mother in Christmas in Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 56 is where I'm going to be sharing uh, from today. And you are familiar with this because uh, you probably come to passages like this and read them at Christmas time. And especially, I know Luke chapter 2, you get to it and share. And that's a tradition around our house that we share Luke chapter 2. Uh, but Luke chapter 1 is really laying the groundwork. Remember that uh, Zacharias and Elizabeth, uh, that they have a child, and, and everybody said, well, she's too old to have a baby. But of course, John the Baptist was born, and he became the forerunner. She uh, was kin to Mary, and Mary went to visit her. And you'll remember that account of how when Mary went to visit Elizabeth, that uh, the babe leaped in Elizabeth's womb uh, because she was in the presence of the Lord, indicating to us, of course, the wonderful baby uh, that Mary was going to give birth to, who is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And what a great time of year that it is with all the different excitement going on uh, to look at this story of Christmas and really remember uh, the true meaning. And as we look at the mother in the story of Christmas, I want to share some things with you uh, about her. And the first thing that I want to share with you about her is I believe Mary was a sensational woman. I believe that she was an amazing woman uh, when uh, you think about this. Just uh, uh, now, when you read this account, and I'll go through and I'll mention some of these things, she wasn't very old uh, when she was chosen for this role. And, and you may have thought, well, if I had been in charge of this, I, I would have done it this way. And you may have thought this kind of woman would have been found living in a palace somewhere. Or at least if she wasn't living in the palace itself, she was at least living in the capital city. But that's not the case. God found this woman, this very sensational woman, 
in a little lowly town of Nazareth as he uh, made his way in his selection of Mary. And I want you to know, Mary was as surprised as we are when we began to delve into the story of the birth of her, our Savior. She is amazed that she was chosen uh, for this special honor. She probably didn't view herself as an amazing woman or anything sensational uh, whatsoever. But as we look at this, notice beginning in verse 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, for the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting uh, this was. Now did you notice something there? She was not really shocked are troubled by the presence of the angel. What she was really troubled by was the statement that he made. It was the words that he was speaking to her. She considered, she said, what kind of greeting of, is this? And he spoke to her and said, rejoice, highly favored one. And what we really see about her is I believe this is the beginning point where she was touched by grace. She was touched by the grace of God. And what an interesting thing that it is. Here she is, a lowly girl in the lowly town of Nazareth. Perhaps she may have been 16 years of age at this particular time in her life. But an angel from the Lord, Gabriel, has come. And he comes to her and he says, highly favored one. And in this refers to Mary being a woman of grace. Because favored, as it is used there, stands for grace. It means grace. Remember last week when we looked at the father in the Christmas story and we found out that Joseph was a just man and we had looked at that and that would mean that he was a man who had experienced the grace of God, who was saved. And Mary receiving this greeting, highly favored, refers to her being saved as well. That God is working through her. She experienced the grace of God in her life life and as a woman of grace she was chosen to be the mother of the savior and what a wonderful thing that is and she's just kind of shocked she doesn't perceive of herself as being anything special and she's troubled by that greeting how can he say that I am this woman of grace but can I tell you something about women like Mary families are blessed when both a father and a mother are saved and when there is a saved father and a saved mother in a home they are able to work together to build a home based on the truth of scripture that gives a solid foundation upon which their children can build their lives and men I would say to you today do you realize what you have if you have a wife who is saved by God's amazing grace what a wonderful gift God has given to you because a woman of grace is a blessing to you. Peace will fill the home where a woman of grace resides and a woman of grace gives guidance to the ways of her household. And here is Mary, this sensational woman touched by the grace of God. But look down to verse 38, if you will. I want you to note a second thing about uh, this sensational woman. Not only was she touched by grace, but she was trusted by God as well. Verse 38, Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now, of course, the angel Gabriel had gone on and told her back in verse 31 that she was going to have a son. She ought to name him Jesus, just like he had told Joseph uh, that you ought to name the baby Jesus. But here she is, shocked that she's going to be the mother of the promised Messiah. Here she is, a lowly maiden who lives in a lowly town, betrothed to a lowly carpenter, and God is trusting her to be the mother of the Savior of the world. 
what a gift that is given unto her. But she receives that. She says, how can it be? Uh, in her conversation with that angel. But she finally comes to the end and she said, be it according to your word. She is amazed uh, that God has trusted her for this great calling. Hearing the words of the Lord uh, that she has been called to give birth to the Savior uh, of the world, she is truly shocked. But let me tell you something, ladies, mothers who are entrusted with children have an equal task as did Mary. No, you're not going to give birth to a Savior, but I want you to know that the mother in the home is a powerful tool for the kingdom of Almighty God. As you lead your children to know God and to live for God, God has entrusted you with some great gifts when he has given you uh, uh, children to lead and to guide and to nurture in the ways of the Lord. And I believe all over this congregation today there are sins sensational women who are saved by the grace of God. You've been trusted by God to make a difference in your families and this body of believers. And I, I believe uh, that we have that today. And I proudly say today that I'm married to a sensational woman who knows the Lord, knows the grace of God, and God has used her in my life and in the life of my family uh, to impact our children and our grandchildren. So when you look at Mary, yes, she had a, a role that was uh, different in that she was giving birth to the Savior, but the role of mothers is a valuable role, especially mothers who have been uh, touched by the grace of God and been trusted by God to impact your families. What a wonderful gift that is. And here is Mary. She's just uh, amazed by this. Then let me draw you back to verse 38 again uh, for the second point, which is that she is submissive. Uh, when she said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. She's amazed. The angel gave her all of those details. Uh, back in verse 30, it ends by saying, Mary, for you have found favor uh, with God, and you're going to give birth uh, to this uh, uh, the Messiah called Jesus. Verse 32, he'll be great, will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him uh, the throne of his father David, and he'll reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. She said, how can I do this? And, and all of those things that are uh, such a part of the story, but she comes to that place, and she submits to the will of God. She's a submissive woman. And notice, she said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord. Notice her subjection to the Lord. As she subjects herself to his will, Mary claims for herself to be a bond servant of God. She is being submissive to God's will, even though it is going to raise eyebrows and create gossip about her character uh, because of the fact uh, that she's going to be pregnant during the, what was essentially an engagement time during those days. But remember that betrothal period was as though they were legally married and a decree of divorce had to be gained if that was going to have, if they were going to break off uh, that betrothal time. And remember Joseph last week was thinking about how to do this and he wanted to do it secretly and handling all the matters because of all of the gossip and all of things that was going on the raising of the eyebrows but here is Mary she is subjected to the will of God mothers who are subjugated to the Lord are powerful influencers on their children we need to live ladies you need to live in that way you need to teach little ones that God is worthy of being obeyed no matter the reaction of others. And you, you need to teach that to our children. We need to learn that as believers in general, uh, that we need to obey God no matter the reaction of others because of the wonderful work that he has done in our lives but her subjection to the Lord not only her subjection to the Lord but notice the surrender uh, to the Lord she surrenders to the will of God for her life she she just comes under that that will of God 
a woman of grace is ready to live by the will of God for her life. And she's just coming there and placing herself uh, in surrender to the Lord. The safest place for a family to live is in the will of God. And we need to be surrendered there. It does not mean that everything is going to be rosy and easy all the time and, and just cheerful and, and those kind of things. Uh, but it does mean that a mother who is submissive to the Lord will find God sufficient for whatever she and her family face in this life. Uh, she is going to be saying to them, God is sufficient. So see, she's a sensational woman uh, because of the task given her by God, but she's also a submissive woman as she yields uh, to what God is doing in her life. And then let me give you a third quality about this mother of Jesus, and that is she's a spirit-filled woman. When you look back to verse 35, And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Note how that the Holy Spirit was going to bring about the pregnancy, uh, but the working of the Holy Spirit on Mary resulted in the birth of Jesus. And this pictures for us uh, that she is a spirit-filled woman. When she submitted to the Lord to do His will, and uh, the Lord... By the work of the Holy Spirit, uh, planted uh, that baby Jesus in her womb. Uh, then we find uh, that when she did go visit Elizabeth, Elizabeth knew that she was in the presence of the Lord's mother uh, because of the reaction of John the Baptist in her womb. But she was a spirit-filled woman. The birth of Jesus was an impossible task for Mary apart from the work of of the Holy Spirit. And can I say to you today, the same is true of, uh, in life of a mother uh, regarding raising children who will trust the Lord as Savior and live for Him. It's an impossible task to bring your children to that place without the presence of the Spirit in your heart and life. You cannot accomplish anything apart from the Holy Spirit. You cannot love your husband. You cannot care for an aged parent. You cannot instruct your children. You cannot teach a Sunday school class apart from the help of the Holy Spirit. A Spirit-filled mother makes a tremendous impact on a home and a family. A Spirit-filled wife is going to be faithful to her husband. Can you imagine this for a moment? Can you imagine the peace and the love that filled the home of Joseph and Mary due to the very presence of the Holy Spirit in that home? What a wonderful and blessed uh, home they had. The entire atmosphere of a home can be one of joy and peace and love when the wife and mother as well as the father live filled with the Spirit of God. What a difference it can make. Spirit-filled living, guided by the Holy Spirit. There are a lot of things calling for our attention today. And they want to lead us off this way. They want to pull us in this direction. They want to say this is the way we ought to live life. And this is what we ought to be doing. But a child of God who's been saved by the grace of God needs to be led by the Spirit of God as they are filled with the Spirit of God to lead their lives. And she was a Spirit-filled woman. Let me give you another truth about Mary that I think you find uh, in this account too, and that is she's a scriptural woman. When you come to verse 46, and I'm going to take the time to read verse 46 through verse 55. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth shall all generations... Uh, for behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. 
For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers to Abraham and his, to his seed forever. When you look at that passage, you find uh, that Mary is a scriptural woman. Uh, actually, if you would go back and look at this and take 1 Samuel chapter 2, you may find from 12 to 15 different verses uh, that you might pull from uh, 1 Samuel 2 and parallel with the words that she just put uh, in those few verses as well. But notice how she began uh, this particular song. Uh, we know it as her song, or, uh, and it says, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. She's a scriptural woman resulting in pray, her praising the Lord. So, so there is pra she praises the Lord. And I, I believe Mary went around the house singing praises to the Lord. She magnifies him, rejoices in him, and she is singing, filled with the Spirit of God, living in the will of God, being subject uh, to God, and uh, caring for the child of God in her womb would evoke praise from Mary. What a task has been given to her. As a scriptural woman, she is a worshiping woman, as we see her in this. But it is the praise. She's got to magnify the Lord. She's rejoicing in the Lord. Uh, she is going to find ways to praise the Lord and rejoice uh, in Him. And all of this is a result of the goodness of the Lord uh, in her life. So, so what a powerful uh, thing it is when she's scriptural and singing uh, the praises of the Lord. And the result uh, of the spiritual impact uh, that she is making on her neighbors causes her to praise. The goodness of the Lord to her family causes her to praise. A woman who praises the Lord fills her home with joy. Praise is going on. So there is praise to the Lord for what he's doing. But not only do you find in those verses praise to the Lord, but you find, pray, you find that she also she proclaim, proclaim the Lord as well. She is proclaiming him in his greatness. I don't know if you noticed while I was reading, but it talked about his might. It talked about his strength. It talked about his mercy. It talked about his provision. It talked about a lot of things and just in those verses. So here is Mary proclaiming the greatness of the God that she worshiped. What a great God he is. She's just a model of how wives and mothers ought to proclaim the Lord to their household. She's just lifting him up, talking about him, proclaiming uh, the Lord. And, and like I said, some of the words that you find there, like verse 49, for he who is mighty has done great things to me. And I would encourage the wives and mothers here today uh, to be faithful in proclaiming the might of God to help your husband realize that God is working for him uh, in his life. And it spoke of the mercy of God uh, in those verses as well. And I would say as a mother, uh, or to you as a mother, take time as a mother to teach your children about the mercy of God and how they ought to show mercy to others as well. Extol the holiness of God, which is mentioned there, as a virtue that needs to guide your children so that they can stand against the temptations of sin that they are going to face in this world. Remind your family of the strength of God to, able, to enable them to do their best and give God the glory for anything that is accomplished in their lives. Just proclaim the greatness of God, uh, of the God that you serve. Praise the Lord and just proclaim Him what a God He is. 
And, and I, I've read the accounts of uh, different preachers through the year, and I've heard of the influence of their mothers on their lives, and uh, they may have been children of great preachers back in those days, but many of them have testified and said their mother were better preachers than their daddies were when they were at home because they proclaimed the greatness of God. Because I want you to understand this. You need to proclaim God. You need to lift Him up. You need to praise God. Because scriptural truth will stand when the philosophies of the world are falling apart. And you need to just proclaim God and God's wonderful, wonderful truth. So when you look at this mother of our Lord, she's a sensational woman. She was a woman who was submitted to do the will of God. She was a woman filled with uh, the spirit of almighty God. And, and we, uh, we just uh, saw her as that wonderful woman who was leading uh, her house, a, a scriptural woman, to lead them in praise and proclamation of the word of God. But I want to give you one other thing about Mary that is true in this story. And I believe that is that Mary was a suffering woman as well oh you the joy of this and, and we read uh, and know in chapter two that she gives birth to jesus but there is some suffering that is going to go on and i'm going to point out something in luke chapter two to you that i want you to notice in just a moment but the truth is sometimes a mother is suffering due to the behavior of her children her heart is broken. Her heart is saddened. She's suffering and going through a difficult time. Her heart is wounded because her children are not behaving as they should. And then there are other times that a mother is suffering due to the things that her children have to experience. Maybe her children are going through a trial. Maybe they are afflicted with some sickness or maybe uh, something bad is happening in their lives but she's suffering due to those things. Can you imagine Mary, uh, the suffering that went on uh, in her heart and life? Now let me call your attention to that passage in Luke chapter 2. Uh, I want you to notice, beginning in verse 33, and Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Luke 2, 33. And then notice verse 34, Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Simeon told Mary, said, you're going to be saddened. You're going to suffer. You're going to be wounded in spirit, in your soul, uh, because of what is going to happen to you. And we know as Mary made her way out to the cross on the day that her son was hanging there dying for my sins and your sins that as a mother she suffered agony at the death of her son as she stood there and watched that. Imagine her being that mother who had taken this little boy, given birth to him, took care of him at home, raised him taught him Bible stories and did all kinds of things with uh, this child, had a child that was subject to her and to his father and uh, how she had uh, just led his life and touched his life. And then there she goes to that cross and her son is dying for the sins, for things of wrong, for things that he is not guilty of whatsoever. But he's dying on that cross. Can you as a mother imagine the agony that went through her heart? Can you imagine uh, how her heart was broken due to the mistreatment that he was experiencing that day on the cross? Now Mary suffered. She suffered due to the fact that her son is suffering death on the cross uh, for reasons that are not his it's not his bad behavior it's not his misconduct he's having to go through this and she is suffering because of it but think of it in one other way 
And can you imagine Mary as she's standing there looking at her son on that cross? And I've already talked about her being highly favored, uh, being touched by the grace of Almighty God. But she was touched by the grace of God looking forward to a day when a Savior would come, die on a cross, and arise from the dead. And that was her precious son. Can you imagine what went through that mother's heart as she stood at that cross? and she looked up there and she saw her son was suffering and dying death on a cross because of her sins and the sins of the whole world. She was a suffering mother. That went through her heart. It went through her mind. You see, there are mothers who suffer due to the pain that they have brought to their families because of the choices uh, that they have made. And some mothers suffer due to watching their children face things that seem so unfair. And Mary stood there experiencing both of those. In a very real sense, she suffered in both of those ways. While witnessing the suffering of her son, she began to realize the reason that Christ came to this world and the fact that she was chosen to be his birth mother was so our sins could be removed. He came and died to save us from our sins. And in the story of the mother of Christmas, we see the salvation plan presented we see the real reason for the coming of jesus oh i believe the mother of jesus was a special lady no doubt she was chosen by god but she willingly fulfilled her role to give birth to the son of god and mary models the impact and influence that mothers can have on their children but I would ask ladies, I would ask girls in this congregation today, I would ask you this, are you a woman who is being highly favored? Are you a woman who has been touched by the grace of Almighty God? And I would even go on to say that to men and young boys that are here in this congregation today, have you been touched are you highly favored? Are you a just man like Joseph was a just man? Are you saved today? And if you are saved today, I would go further and ask you this. Are you living for the Lord by being obedient to His will in your life? Have you been confronted with the truth that Jesus suffered and died for your sins on the cross maybe today in this message maybe through things that you've heard or somebody has talked to you and you realize today your greatest need is to be saved from your sins and you need to do that today would you turn from sin would you realize that Mary's little baby boy was sinless would you realize today that he grew up and he went and he was placed on a cross, and when he was hanged on that cross, on him was placed all of your sins, and he died due to your sins, and he's carrying your sins away that you can be forgiven of them. Would you uh, turn from sin? Would you put your trust in Jesus' death and resurrection to be your Savior today? That little baby that we sing about at Christmas time became a man and came for the very sake and purpose of saving you from your sins. Would you believe in him and trust him this day to be your Savior? And if you have done so, are you living obediently for the Lord? Are you in his will? Are you like Mary? Would you be willing uh, to say, uh, behold, here I am, Lord. Let it be according to your word. I'm going to live my life that way, obedient to the word of God.
Would you bow your heads and close your eyes as we prepare to sing the invitation hymn? If you don't know Christ, Christmas is all about salvation. It's all about a Savior coming into the world, being birthed in an unusual way, suffering an unusual death to redeem you. Would you come to Christ today? Would you trust Him to be your Savior? I mentioned earlier I'm grateful for all the mothers that are such godly women that make up this congregation and their influence and their power on the families of this body of believers. But is there a mother and you know you're not where God really wants you to be right now and you need to respond to Him? Would you come? Are there fathers that maybe you've been thinking about last week's message and you hearing the story of Christmas. You want, want to be a, uh, a different kind of husband, a different kind of father in your family. You need to come today. Maybe saved, but you need to just see things different in your home. Would you respond? Maybe God's done something in your life, or maybe there are other ways that you need to respond to God. Would you come during these moments of invitation, being obedient to God? living according to God's word, doing what God wants you to do. Just respond if God is dealing with your heart. Father, we love you and thank you. Thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you for Mary, this very sensational woman that became the mother of our Savior. Thank you, Father, for her, for her raising him, for her just being a willing vessel, Lord. Lord, may people here today submit to be willing vessels to live for you and to serve you. May people come to know Christ here today. But, oh God, you just move on hearts and draw people to yourself in these moments, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand as we sing.
folks that came forward, come stand by me here if you will. I'm going to start uh, at my right. This is bread that Ivy Combs, and they've been coming for some time, and, and they've uh, gone through the membership classes and uh, completed those. And, and Ivy, and, uh, she's been scripturally baptized, but she's coming by statement uh, this morning. And uh, Brett has got to follow through with believers' baptism. And uh, I said, coming from another denomination. Uh, uh, That's why, that, uh, why he is coming today and why we'll be baptizing him. So if you rejoice in Brett and I am coming today. All right, uh, this young man wants me to speak for him. Well, I believe he can do it, but uh, this is Ashby Crib. Ashby came and talked to me this week. He said he'd been thinking about salvation and the Lord, and he just wanted to really have things settled in his heart. And when we talked, he prayed and asked Jesus to be his Savior, and uh, he wants to follow him. And he's he's a the guy that you want to speak, or you want me to do the speak? Okay, always oh, that. This is Kai Riddle. Kai came forward today and uh, told me that he had gotten saved several years ago, but he needs to be baptized. So uh, we're going to baptize instead of time to baptize him as well. You rejoice in Kai's decision. Amen. Come on, ask all of y'all if you would to go to the best mule and, and just be out there and uh, kind of stand, let folks come by and speak to you, greet you, and welcome you uh, to the service. And I also remind those folks that fill out visitor cards today. Uh, hold on to those. Come by and see Rhonda and myself out front. We have a gift for you, so be sure and do that. And next Sunday, next Sunday morning, uh, you'll be hearing the choir do their, uh, do their Christmas music next Sunday morning. But remember tonight, the children are presenting their uh, program, Star Search, tonight. And I hope you'll come support the children as they present their program tonight, do their musical, and uh, be here. And also, don't forget, following uh, the service tonight, uh, you've been asked to bring finger foods, desserts, those things for uh, time of fellowship. Uh, looking around, it is uh, Demont in here. Demont, are you are you inside here, Brother Demont Rogers? All right, what about Jim Franklin? You see Jim Franklin? There he is. All right, Brother Jim, let's start a closing prayer before he does. Thank you. 